here at Mobile World Congress at the ARM booth. So you're talking about uh, Trust Zone. What's the latest news with that? So uh, to start with, uh, Trust Zone is the security architecture for ARM. It's been uh, present in, uh, in ARM CPU for the last six, seven years. And um, what we are showing here is that two things. Firstly, how security can open new markets. And secondly, how security can improve user experience, which is becoming more of a differentiator for everyone concerned. So I would like to uh, just briefly show you this. So what's going on there? So for a lot of online retailers, uh, like uh, Amazon and uh, eBay, they have got a relationship with the customer so that they can store all the uh, account details and card details. But for a website that you have never been to, the process for payment typically is actually you need to enter your card details and your address and that's a very long process and the user experience is not that good. What we can demonstrate here is that in here there is a micro SD, uh, micro secure micro SD issued by a bank. It's got a standard chip and pin used in Europe type of security credit card payment mechanism. So there's a mobile wallet managing this. So you go to any online website and you pay for your purchase and the pay now opens the mobile wallet on the phone and it's using it's using the credit card details stored in the secure micro SD to make the payment. And what happens here is, and what is enabled by TrustZone is secure pin entry, which is uh, protected by TrustZone so it cannot be uh, attacked by malware or virus. And this, gap is, this is then encrypted and authenticated by your chip and pin mechanism in the standard way. Now, because you have authenticated your pin, this in payment terms is what we call a car holder present transaction, which means that the car holder physically has entered the PIN. So for the merchant, there is less of a uh, uh, transaction charge, potentially. For the user, all he did was about five or six clicks, and he has made a payment, and he has sent the address to the merchant. And now the merchant, who has never seen the uh, user before, has completed a transaction in five, six steps. So he's guaranteed almost for the user to complete the transaction. So you never need to enter your credit card number again. You just type in your PIN code no matter what happens. Yes. And uh, no matter what happens, the merchant knows the payment is for real. Yes, indeed. So the, the authorization is sent to the merchant. The merchant sends that to the payment uh, processing platform who then processes it and the reconciliation of bank accounts happens. But is it possible to spoof the screen? Do you have like a blinking light somewhere that says now you're in secure mode? Ah, so this is, um, we typically um, have got what we call a, um, a service to uh, consumer messaging, which is that the screen is guaranteed personally to be always the top level screen. So it will always be the top most level. So it's guaranteed firstly that um, software cannot intercept your key presses because it's happening in trust zone. It is possible to spoof the same screen. So the trick actually is in implementation. How do you as a service in software make sure that you have got something that cannot be spoofed. It could be something that the user uh, chooses during registration. It could be his own cat. It could be his daughter's photo. It's, a, it's called a personalization screen to make sure that an, an attack cannot widely spread. It can be only specific. Right. So that's one of the ways of... Uh, so as, as long as Trust Zone is displayed, it's impossible for another app to actually see what's on the screen, that's right? That's correct, that's correct. So if you have a cat photo that you know is, should be there, like a secure cat photo? It's one of the ideas for making sure that, you know, um, how do you spoof the screen? You need to know what it looks like. How do you know what it looks like? You haven't got software that can capture it. Are you going to take a photo of it? Who's going to let you get that close? So there are a number of difficulties, potentially, of how you might 
do that. Yeah. And what this is happening is that it's, it's essentially increasing the level of difficulty for any... Could you uh, maybe do something with this little light there and, and say if it blinks in a special way then... You know, it, it could be a spoofed uh, um, session of trust. It's on. one of the ideas that are being considered by our partners, and it's still under the discussion. It's there are yeah. pros and cons about this. But that's a hardware issue, right? Yeah. It's not enough just to have trust on. You also need to have maybe it's, if you want to have a light diode, you yeah. should add it like it's a hardware thing, right? There are a number of uh, nice. factors that we need to consider, such as would the consumer be accepting this? Will he associate that with? Um, would he associate that with uh, trust of a brand? Is it possible to modify the LED uh, completely to you know exactly what kind of difficulties would that be? It's not a technical problem. It's a consumer messaging problem. It's how do you build a service and how do you build a proposition around that? And uh, I would like to also yeah. uh, show you this. Um, so. The mobile payment acceptance um, market is cutting up quite, quite, uh, quite um, in a big way in the U.S. So Square has demonstrated that actually, you know, they're making a lot of sales in, in, in this area. So from the figures that uh, we have seen, 85% of the payment in the world are still cash and check. So there is still there's a lot of market potential in there. So what can we do? You know, we are working with MasterCard to evaluate Trustzone to okay. see how it can help with, uh, with uh, the uh, mobile point of sale terminal. So this is a merchant or someone who wants to accept a payment. And uh, this is a standard NFC uh, payment. Thin screen? No. Um, I have just sold you 20 pounds worth of food. Okay. Yeah, what, what have you? And I uh, show up to you, say, sir, this is ten pounds. Would you like to pay for it? I open my wallet application here, which is done by our partner Proxama, who also do um, wallet applications for Mastercard. I choose this uh, card to pay with. Okay, and uh, so this is a standard NFC payment mechanism. The authorization is sent to here and you can also um, get a SMS receipt but what we are doing with MasterCard and what we are evaluating is so NFC typically is capped at say £10, £15 how do you make the mobile point of sale terminal more flexible how do you increase the transaction value so our um, idea and the technology and the proposal is that if you have got secure pin entry on this device if you can enter your PIN on a device that you trust, that is your device, you are not transmitting your PIN, you are not transmitting your account number, you are transmitting the authorization for £20, £200 to this device here. So, for a mobile... Where was the SIM? Uh, where, where was the PIN increase? Uh, we have not yet implemented this on here. Not yet, but it's under evaluation and this is something that we are going to do. Um, the uh, challenge with mobile point of sale terminal is that this terminal is someone else's smartphone. Am I going to enter my PIN on your phone? I don't think so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to enter PIN on my phone that I trust. With trust zone, I know that no software, malware, uh, no other uh, malicious software can attack it. So what I have done is that I have guaranteed that my PIN entry on here is secure and I'm only trans, uh, transmitting the authorization for a larger payment, a car holder present payment to this thing here. And then this is then, the authorization is then transmitted to the bank. So mm. this is, uh, I think it's a very exciting um, development. So what we are showing here is that security is important. Security opens new markets and security improves user experience. Thank All you. Right. And uh, just, just to know, uh, th this phone is in the market, right? And uh, it has an OMAP 4 uh, processor inside, which has trust zone. It can have trust zone, but what is needed to to activate that feature on, on, a, on a phone that can have a trust zone? Okay, so um, so TIs obviously you know you need to talk to TI to get the um, to, de to to get a bit more de detail. So most of our silicon partners 
uh, security architecture is built on top of trust zone, and it's up to them to enable or not to enable. So if they want to enable, they have to enable before they sell the phone, and they could maybe That's do it correct. later. Or yes, yes, All right. yes. And uh, I, did you, is it with them that you announced uh, something about uh, what's it called, uh, wallets experimentation with trust zone, some kind of wallet? Um, I'm not aware of that. It may right. have been done with other parts of the company. I'm not aware of that. Okay. Yeah. So, so trust zone is the hardware architecture. What we are doing is that without a interoperable secure OS running on top of the hardware architecture, it's not as flexible. So what ARM is doing is um, ARM is uh, looking at what are the recommended way to implement trust zone so you can have a system-wide security architecture on ARM-based uh, SOCs. And what is the common APIs for a secure OS that allows uh, software interoperability and allows quicker software development? And then how do we provide assurance to uh, financial institutions? So these are the three things that ARM is investing. When you were showing over there uh, the pin code entry, was that a secure OS or was it just an app on top of Android? It's uh, running on the secure OS. It's what we call a trusted execution environment. A trusted execution environment is the secure OS combined with the trusted hardware architecture. So that's, we, that secure OS can be customized? It's, we prefer to be uh, standardized because we believe there's a lot of value in consistency, interoperability. And uh, is it possible to use it to log into any website like Facebook, Twitter? Could it be used to, for any authentication on the internet or is it only payments? It's one of the use cases for uh, trusted execution environments. So our, um, our vision is that it allows multiple use cases for security and very strong user authentication certainly is one of the use cases that our partners building on top of the trusted security foundation, what we call PEE, can do. Yes. Could it make sense to have a, a password for websites and a password for payments and a password for net banking so you don't have the same password for all of it? It can be done in a number of ways. It can be done in a number of ways. And that's uh, something that I think our partners need to look at and see what kind of solutions works best. There are a, a number of ways of what can you do when you have got a secure UI, a secure screen for pin entry, and also if you have got user credentials uh, being entered securely, exactly how would you firstly improve user experience and secondly uh, allow more high value services to be transmitted through your service? Could, could there be other things than pin number? Could it be like a swipe thing or face unlock or uh, uh, iris scan? finger scan, all that stuff? It can, is it something you're uh, testing already? So that's something that our partners could potentially could work on, but it's not that I'm aware of at the moment. There are limitations in terms of how big a secure application that can run, because the secure OS runs on the CPU itself and there's limited in memory. So it's extremely secure, it's uh, protected obviously running on the actual CPU itself, uh, but obviously you know, the memory is limited. All right, so there's going to be a lot more on Trust Zone very soon. Yes, indeed. Yeah, indeed. Okay. Thank you.